Well, after 21 years of flying Mach 2 with my hair on fire, I finally let go and now I just fly this tube of shame. Which is why it was so special to get an early screening of this amazing movie three days before it opens. I'll be honest, I was skeptical and was worried I'd be scoffing all the inaccuracies for all two hours and 11 minutes. Now don't get me wrong, of course there are some, but they are way overshadowed by the flying scenes and honestly they nailed a lot of the small details. This is the no spoiler version of this video. I get a lot more into all the details in that version right there. So you're safe here if you haven't seen the movie yet, but make sure and come back after you've seen it and you want to see it. Great seats. Really Air Force? An ad at the beginning of Top Gun? That's just embarrassing. Hey, it's Freak. Welcome back to Clear Direct. This movie blew my mind. For all of Tom Cruise's quirks, his love for aviation is second only to mine and it shows. He obsessed over every detail of the flying scenes and even got his co-stars flying lessons before putting them in the back seat of a Super Hornet. In fact, Hangman and Payback went on to get their private pilot's licenses. But back to the Rhino, I am so glad they featured the Super Hornet as opposed to the F-35. Now, I'm not an F-35 hater. Okay, yeah, yeah. Over budget, under delivers, that's a topic for another video. But they went with the F-18F because it's the family model. Right? But Tom Cruise actually tried to convince the DOD to give him his type rating in the Hornet in the F-18E and smartly they said no. This instant classic used limited CGI and relied heavily on live action aerial shots, thank goodness. Now, the production team, including aerial cinematographer Kevin LaRosa, did an Oscar worthy job putting us right in the cockpit with the actors. The G's were real and it shows. Not even freak of nature Tom Cruise could keep his eyebrows from drooping under the string. I was wondering if the movie would take place at the actual Top Gun at Fallon Naval Air Station near Reno, where I've fought many young Top Gun students and some instructors in my F-15, but smartly, they opted to do the bulk of the filming at the picturesque North Island in San Diego. Plus, it's just down the beach from Oceanside and Miramar, where the 1986 version took place. There are some great desert, mountain, and blue water ocean scenes too, of course. The movie opens with an updated carrier scene, and that same great soundtrack that immediately gets your goosebumps raised. I saw Lady Gaga on the, on the preview and apparently there's a song for the movie. I don't know if they cut it out or what, but I don't remember hearing her voice in the movie. But otherwise, soundtrack is pretty good. It gets a little hokey in some of the dogfighting scenes. There is an, a scene that was absolutely advised by probably an Air Force fighter pilot. Well done, sir. Unless Navy fighter pilots tell the same story about Jeremiah Weed and where that came from. Grizzly Adams and a bar, it's just, it's awesome. So keep your eye out for that, you can't miss that. There's some product branding by Lockheed Martin, which is kind of funny because a lot of the stuff takes place in the Hornet, Super Hornet, which is McDonnell Douglas Boeing. They do a pretty good job of overselling the cockiness of these young fighter pilots. Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they gonna get to teach us? Mitchell. All right, now the younger generation of actors, they, it's, it's kind of funny, they, they portray them pretty well. I don't know, I think kind of in a boomer's mindset, they're taking selfies and joking around and whatnot, but, but the actors do a pretty good job of dealing with that. They start their immediately do some BFM and dogfighting, which is amazing. Sir, I'm not a teacher. Into low, low level training where they're just flying through these canyons, which is great because they feel the need for speed, right? And it shows the speed really, really well. I'm sure they sped up some of the sequences, but um, again, showing the G's and the sweat pouring down, that was just like really well done and very accurate. Okay, clearly Rooster is featured in this movie, Goose's son, right? And so there's a lot of uh, going back and forth between Tom Cruise and, and Rooster, and they, they do a really good job together. And Rooster is a front seater. That's all I'm gonna say on that. There's a healthy dose of Nav, Rio, Wizzo hating that is actually really funny. Don't worry, R2, you'll get your vengeance later on in the film. There are some Tomahawk missiles that fly. I'm not giving anything away by saying that. Just realize that they're flying way faster than normal. Like you have seen some harsh criticism for the team not bringing back Meg, Meg Ryan and Kelly McGillis. Instead, they bring in Penny Benjamin, played by the now 51-year-old Jennifer Connelly, who is objectively a smoke show. You may not remember, but in the first one, Penny was the general's daughter who Mav got in trouble for doing a flyby for, as told by Meg Ryan's character, Carol Bradshaw. Who why you gotta hate her like that? The other things that I'll, I'm gonna get into the details tactically, kind of give away some of the plot in the other uh, video. So remember to go ahead and watch that video once you're done watching the movie and go see it. I had I had high expectations just because it's 
well, I guess it's been like three years since they've been teasing it, just pushing it back. But also low expectations at the same time. I was hoping they wouldn't do any sort of like aileron rolls to defeat a, uh, a, a gunshot. Uh, I'm not going to tell you if they do or not, but I will tell you that I was pleasantly surprised. There are some areas you're just going to have to hit that I believe button and just go there with the with the, the writers. But overall, those are way overshadowed by the cinematography and the decent storyline. All right, it's Hollywood. They can't they can't um, integrate every certain layer of tactical consideration on a mission. They are accurate in the fact that they do address the G limit of the aircraft is 7.3. A student of mine. Uh, pulled 12.3 G's to save his life after waking up from a G-lock and that mighty Eagle jet sacrificed its life to save his. He flew again, but the jet didn't. Question for all you Navy pilots, are all ready rooms saunas? Now reportedly China funded 10% of this movie, so clearly they couldn't use Chinese fighters or have that be the mission. And they also had to change some patches on Maverick's leather jacket to appease them. But there's a great comedic moment. As but then I got pretty worried that this was turning into a behind enemy lines or worse Iron Eagle. But it doesn't last that long. They With Mav doing all that pilot shit. Again, I am not poo-pooing the inaccuracies. They're, they're way overshadowed by the cinematography and the pretty decent storyline. There are a lot of flashbacks to the original film, which was fantastic and does the original classic justice. Again, the fact that Cruz is aviation obsessed is evident and even features some scenes of him flying his own P-51. So we're treated to that plus... All right, get ready Navy recruiters. You're gonna have a surge. Congrats to Paramount, Tom Cruise, Kevin LaRosa, and the US Navy and current fighter pilots. You are lit once again. Let me know if you think they should make a Top Gun 3 before, you know, 2058. Until next time, you're cleared to wrap.